Okay, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Leslie Williams, and today's date is January 11th, 2013, and this is going to be a three-part video series. The first two videos will be 15 minutes long, and the third video will be about nine minutes long. Each of the YouTube titles connected to this three-part video series will be in the description of each YouTube video, and if they're not put in there immediately, all you got to do is copy and paste the title of each one, and just add one, two, or three um, uh, to the end of the title, because I'm, I'm going to title them, and then I'm going to put a dash one at the first one, a dash two at the second one, dash three at the third one, but they're all going to have the same title. I'm in San Diego, California, and my name is Leslie Williams. I live in La Jolla. I am a target victim and activist concerning the crimes of what is known as organized stalking. Now, I have made hundreds of videos, and they are already online right now, and so if you're a regular viewer, you might think, after you watch this, you might think to yourself, well, she's already talked about this. This video is being made in order to kind of get to the nitty gritty, and to it, it uh, it's also being made for first time viewers, so they can get a, a preliminary introduction in reference to why certain targeted individuals can be picked. One targeted individual can be picked by the perpetrators for multiple, multiple different criminal aspirations. Multiple. Anything from them attempting to take syndicated probate control of a target in order to either apply for benefits at the federal and state and local level in the target's name as a result of them having syndicated probate control, that's right, or to co-opt their existing finances, like Social Security or pensions or anything, okay? Co-opting targets property in reference to their houses, houses or the equity in them. That's right. Land co-opting, property co-opting, and mortgage co-opting is another methodology of gangs, another aspiration of organized stalking, gang stalking expeditions. Non-consensual human experimentation is also another one. Now, that's one right there that is definitely, that definitely sticks out the Six, sticks outside of the normal circle of normalcy in reference to what the average American citizen uh, sees and or hears about in reference to what's going on in their community. But all you have to do, if you, if you feel inclined to do so, is just go to Google and even YouTube. It'll take you five seconds to just go to Google and or YouTube and type in organized stalking and or gang stalking and non-consensual human experimentation. And you will literally be able to witness it before your eyes, hundreds and hundreds of blogs and YouTube videos about it. Okay, now a targeted individual can also be picked for human trafficking, sexual servitude, which can definitely lead into prostitution rings. That's right. Racketeering of all forms. Embezzlement, fraud, insurance fraud included. So what I do, what I do is I make videos to try and inform the public and fellow targeted individuals concerning not only the motivations of these, of these criminals, and basically the individuals who are perpetrating these crimes are organized crime members that are in the system that have tentacles out within the community to separate white and blue collar workers. Anybody can be involved in the syndication, it's a syndicate, of organized stalking and gang stalking and these criminal filthy sewer rats will also use their employment descriptions to, but not limited to, uh, influence an innocent community members to assist them based on lies, slander, intimidation, bribery, collusion, you name it, bartering, anything. So, what is the purpose of this particular video outside of me telling you just a few of the criminal motivations that they can have for one targeted individual, okay? The reason why I decided to make this video is because I wanted to give you, and this three-part video series, is because I wanted to give whoever's watching my videos, hopefully targets, and definitely hope, hopefully community members, so they can get an understanding of not just the motivations of why they're targeted, but also to give you at, at least a preliminary introduction by, by describing to you descriptions of their methodologies, tactics, maneuvers, and schemes that they use and implement against the targeted individual and even their family members and friends in order to achieve their original motivations that they have for the targeted individual. That's right. Now, in organized stalking and gang stalking expeditions, what they'll do with a targeted individual, and um, they can even literally make more than one family member a target. Hold on a second. Now, I just got done eating lunch, so I'm having my after lunch cigarette, so I, don't, I hope you don't mind me smoking. Uh... Now, you might think to yourself, this is a sad thing that this is happening towards this woman. Uh, 
uh, you know, it's really too bad, but here's, uh, you, you know, you might think to you, you, that to yourself, that this is a sad thing that's happening to me, and, and, it, and, it, and it actually is sad. But here's the thing, the criminality that is happening to me is not happening to me because of any choice that I ever made, not one choice. The criminality that's happening to me is happening to me, I, I at least highly suspect that it's because of, in part, of the organized crime syndicated members that are probably in my family. That's right. And my family was upper middle class. That's right. And, and as far as I know, they were never... There, as far as I have been able to deduce, they've either been intimidated, influenced, or engaged in gang stalking without them even knowing about it as a result of them possibly being lied to or influenced, or them being part of organized stalking, gang stalking expeditions, or are, at, or are being intimidated. It doesn't matter. Either either of the three is bad enough. But let's, let, let me let me help you understand something. My family was upper middle class. My father was chief MP to General Curtis LeMay. There's high ranking retired Air Force in my family, retired NASA, and my ex-husband was a, a submarine radar antenna electrician for the Navy. Okay. Now, as a result of the, some of the things that my parents did towards me when I was a young adult, throwing me out of the house for literally, literally, literally no reason whatsoever. Um, and looking back on it from an adult perspective, I can definitely see that these um, excuses to throw me out were orchestrated. Because I was literally, I, I knew it was when I was younger, I just couldn't put it together in my mind why it was happening. Now I know why. Because of the simple fact of the methodologies that have been used towards me as an adult that were used to create homelessness of me as an adult once I became an open, open gang stalking target. Now these crimes are intrusive. Intricent, methodical, exacting, and prevalent. Okay? And these individuals who perpetrate these criminalities do not care at all about how much they hurt, how they hurt, why they hurt. All they care about is the control and the money and the exploitation of the targeted individual and everything they got to achieve the same. Now, organized, and now, what they basically did in my life after me being kicked out, I got married, and then I got divorced. And then I still couldn't go back to the same dysfunctional family because they were the same dysfunctional family. So I, I again was found myself homeless again, except when I got married I moved out of the state because he was in the Navy. So by the time I got divorced and moved back to the state that I grew up in, all the family, uh, all the neighborhood friends that I grew up with had, had moved on, got married and moved out of the neighborhood. Okay? So I had no one to fall back on, no one to turn to at all. Okay? Hold on a second. I then moved into a community where my sister had rented upper flats for years on end, and as well as my brother Michael. Hold on a second. <clears throat> so since I knew over time that they had rented these flats in this specific community in that state, I thought to myself, well, all I got to do is get a job and I'll do the same, and which is what I did. And then I discovered over time that individuals that were literally holding some church group meetings right direct the church door was directly parallel to the door of my apartment of the first apartment that i got once i left my ex-husband back and filed for a divorce back in 1986. those were the individuals that covertly create uh, covertly and intentionally entered my life hold on a second and as that was going on they were late <sighs> sorry they were directly connected to organized talking gang stalking groups and while all that was going on, they were also, they were, they, they saw me and they planned on already intentionally, uh, 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 covertly squeezing, uh, wiggling themselves into my personal life. And while that was going on, a second subset of people in the same community that did not live in that community, but lived in another community, but had friends in that community, also infiltrated my life. Because it's a syndicate, and they all work together. Okay, and what they basically do is learn your routes, your regular routes and your regular routines, and they infiltrate, they come, they come across your path and introduce yourself to them, okay, to you, and then they suck you in, okay, and uh, some police were also involved, okay, in the theater that was created in order to even get me introduced to them. Over time, <coughs> hopefully I'll be able to prove that. But because of the acquired evidence concerning the crimes that happened towards me and the eventual proof that I got, I have no doubt in my mind whatsoever that one day when I tell my full, complete story, 
individuals who might be interested in hearing it will be able to see the dots, connect them, and say to themselves, this is just the most one of the most heinous crimes that a human being can literally experience. For the, at least since 1980, at least, my life has been, my ex-husband was intentionally placed in my life, intentionally for me to meet, date, and marry. And he was put in my life for trauma purposes and for sexual, and, and for sexual exploitation. Because in his mind, the only thing he cared about was marry or so what? It's a piece of paper. That's right. And um, so anyways, the point I'm trying to make is this, is that the people that entered my life, the one set of people that had friends in that community, okay, because two separate groups of people entered my life. One was living in that community, and another one had friends in that community that lived, and that one, that one family lived in Redford, okay? They were church elders of a church. And the other ones were hosting meetings that were going on in Christian churches in the community that I moved into. Okay, and these people were not outwardly, outwardly, noticeably at all involved in any type of criminal activity whatsoever. In fact, they duped me into believing that my life was out of control, which baited me into believing that I need to keep coming back to their meetings, okay, and things that they were hosting and managing, like picnics and stuff like that. Basically, what they were doing was keeping me busy so I would not form any other types of healthy social relationships with anybody else. That's right. Now, there's some, there are some things that went on that I can't talk about right now because I cannot prove them. But I can prove that they were involved in organized stalking. And the things that went on are all over the internet in reference to that being involved in gang stalking and organized stalking. And over time, I will be able to prove that undeniably. Undeniably. Now, I'm a good woman. I'm not involved in any illegal or criminal activity whatsoever. Whatsoever. I'm not a threat to myself, and I am not mentally ill. But these last three descriptions are the types of descriptions that organized stalking, gang stalking managers who are in the system will attempt to label a target as in order to, in order to gain the aforementioned syndicated probate control of the targeted individual. It's racketeering, insurance fraud, and human trafficking. That's right. And, and the individuals that are responsible for taking the syndicated probate control are connected to syndicated probate judges, and lawyers and prosecutors that work for the state. It's organized crime in the system. That's right, including with police officers. Now, as a result of this syndicate being in the system, they are also connected to individuals out within the community. And they also wield the power positions to influence anybody in the community to get their cooperation to have those people cooperate with anything that they decide to, to use them for against the targeted individual. That includes church members, members of charities, self-help groups, uh, homeless shelters, universities, public libraries, businesses, you name it. In every single description that I described right now so far, just in this video alone, can be googled and YouTubed. Homelessness is intentionally and covertly created and kept managed for the targeted individuals. Go to Google and type in landlords and property owners and gang stalking or organized stalking. I suggest you turn, use both of those terms in your research. Okay? Uh, postal employees, mail theft the mail delayment. That's right, because they got to create the homelessness in or, and then keep it covertly managed in order to try and claim the target can't take care of themselves in order to use that as an additional tool, excuse, to, to, to attempt to take the syndicated probate control. I'm in San Diego, Kello, and this includes falsifying police reports, incident reports like at universities, yeah, security guard reports of business classes, MT, uh, any tr public transportation security report, any report because they're in the system. Go to YouTube and type in listen to a stranger to get a preliminary introduction in reference to how easy it is to dupe, to dupe anybody to do anything for an individual who appears to have a position of authority. And there's also some additional information on that YouTube video that will show you some other techniques of gang stalking. Please look in the description of this YouTube video for YouTube titles. This is a three-part video series, this being video number one. i got to shut this video down because it's almost 15 minutes long, and I'm getting ready to make the second video now. Thank you.